and welcome to What's Girl Speaks. Today is Thursday, September 30th. I don't procrastinate. And this is episode 302. I'm Amy Beth, also known as the Fat Squirrel on Ravelry and the Fat SQRRL on Instagram. Thanks for coming over. It's hot outside, but let's just pretend it's not. Okay. Okay. <laughs> like, I probably look kind of sweaty and gross, but I know you don't mind. Bobby pins are falling out. It's madness. Madness, I say. Am I up too high? Ooh. <clears throat> I'm glad this was not pulled out wider because you would have seen my boob be like boop, boop. <laughs> thanks for coming over do you want some tea I haven't even poured okay normally I don't do teapot like I'm a big just like tea infuser in the, t the cup kind of person because I'm the only person in this house who drinks tea but I'm using my cute little Sarah house mug hi Sarah that is right right I think that's right yes um, that a friend of mine gave me and I was, um, what was I going to say? Oh, and I was just too greedy. I was like, I want more than that much tea. <laughs> because I busted into the David's tea full stash. So this is sweet potato. I know it's decadent. And you know what? Normally I cut it with black tea because I'm kind of cheap. You get the full on. All of that's in there is the fancy stuff. Just saying. And by fancy, I mean like boring white lady fancy. <laughs> <laughs> Not like literally fancy. Um, but yeah, right? Uncut. Because I love you. Thanks for coming over, even though it's not cold yet. I know that it's got like sugar and stuff in it and like again it has full on like itty bitty marshmallows in it don't care it's delicious it's a fancy tree for you and me also because we are falling it despite the outside the teen totally made the first pumpkin roll of the season yesterday and it's in there and it's completely pristine like they did the like trimming of the ends to like test it for poison and to make sure it looked presentable for company because you were coming over. Not really. So if she did, Dee didn't know. Um, but I I taught them to do that. I feel very proud every time they trim off their ends and then eat them. I'm like, yeah, that's a baker's trick. Um, but anyway, so that's in there. If you want some, I haven't even touched it yet. I don't know what I'm waiting for. I think it's supposed to be a little bit cooler tomorrow. Maybe we'll, I'll have mine tomorrow. But anyway, there's lots of snacks. What else is happening? Oh my gosh. I cannot even discuss <laughs> table of so full of stuff to talk about this week, this week. Like I've started on my like fall sewing plans and by fall sewing, I mean like for myself, for garments, not necessarily for shop stuff, but there is shop stuff here as well. I've, we, last time we talked about we had gone picking for our Cortland apples. I finished all of our applesauce. It was about 90-ish pounds and we got a 58, 58 pints of sauce out. Excuse me, right? 58 pints of applesauce, which means we get a pint a week until the, the apples are ready. Can you hear, I wonder if you can hear my jaw. My jaw is like doing the crackly gross thing. I used to have the, the crackly jaw when I was like younger and in stress all the time, but it went away forever. And when we went on vacation, I've had it since we came back. Like I've been doing all these like Beetlejuice level jaw stretches that my teenager told me to do where you're like, like literally like unhinge your jaw did you like that i just pulled that beetlejuice reference out of nowhere and it's spooky season you're welcome um but anyway it's still oh so gross it's so crunchy i don't like it but anyway what were we talking about oh i just was wondering if you could hear that but i don't remember what i was talking about before <laughs> 
applesauce. That's what I was talking about. So yeah, we have tons of applesauce. Hooray. Um, what else? Oh, I just gave up on the fall garden, which is ridiculous because now, like we have all this warm weather, I really should have gotten some fall gardening in because we're probably not even gonna have a frost till like February or something. But I failed. That's okay. I'll just get my everything else from other people. Okay, okay. But yeah, I've definitely been fall fantasy apple shopping where I just look at all the different orchards online and try to see what they have available. I have issues. <laughs> Serious mushrooms. Um, but like, I'm trying to figure out what we should talk about first and I just don't even know where to start. I don't even know where to start. Okay, let's start here because it's sort of on the top of the pile. But today, so what I'll probably talk about is, um, I'll put hash, I'll put hashtags, I'll put timestamps in so you can skip ahead because it's gonna be a long one. Um, and I'm not even showing you everything because it's just too much. But things that I'll talk about today are I want to show you a book that is so precious. I want to, oh, I should show you that too. And then, <laughs> I want to show you a book that's so precious and I want to show you kind of like some fall sewing plans I've got kind of percolating for myself. And then there's going to be shop sewing that I need to show you. And then of course there's going to be knitting, but there's no spinning and no anything else, right? Oh, I left my embroidery in there. I I'll just talk about that next time. I did get the little white pumpkin embroidery. And then, oh wait, no, I did bring it in here because I brought in the little cat. Okay, I'm just going to tell you right now. I'll tell you real quick. You don't mind, right? Um, I started a quilt. I'm not going to show you my quilt. By the way, the fabric line is called Cider. Okay. So, you know, I had to make that. And there's no apples in it, but it just is such a beautiful color palette. I actually bought the, bought the, fab the, bought the fabric last fall, but I just started it now. Oh, well. Um, but oh, so I got my little white pumpkin stitchery. Here she is so fall, fall, so fall. Here she is so fall. Okay, but I took a pause because now I'm like, wait, do I need a blue pumpkin stitchery? Because I really love like a blue pumpkin. Some of you are probably like, what are you talking about? But you know, like that kind of like weird grayish, I left the threads in the other room. This is a moot point now. But you know what I mean? Like there's like that grayish blue. It's sort of like this-ish color, only way dirtier and grayer. Like it's really not like this at all. But like imagine this if you added just a little bit of yellow and then like a lot of gray to it. That, that's kind of where we're going. But you know, like that like kind of like Hubbardy squash color. Did I just make that up? Hubbard squashes are blue, right? Am I? I guess I could have just like Googled a picture and showed you what I meant by blue squash. Oh my gosh, I just bought those shoes too. Um, <laughs> out of control. Um, oh, come on. But like this kind of like weirdish color. Ooh. I should just start calling it Hubbard blue. That's what I should just call it. But, um, so yeah, so I've been hesitant, like, do I go forward with the white pumpkin, which I do really love a white pumpkin, or do I go with a, maybe I should just make two. That's probably what I should do. <laughs> Isn't it cute so far? <sighs> I'm really enjoying the embroidery. I gotta be honest with you, I'm not enjoying the cross stitch. So I'm gonna let it sit for a minute. I'm not in love with the process. I used to really love cross stitch when I was younger. I made like a million cross stitch things when I was younger, but I don't think I've ever, if I've made something on linen, it's been a long time. Like I've probably only done it like once or twice, but like this is the sum total of how much I have done. <laughs> 
And I don't know if it's just because it's hard to see and like I need like one of those little magnifying things, but I'm not sure I really want to invest in that if I'm not, you know what I mean? Like if I'm really not gonna dig it that much. Right now I'm just enjoying the embroidery because it's very much just like coloring. You just stay in the lines. You don't really have to reference a pattern. I mean, you might want to reference a pattern just to see like what they suggest you should do, but you don't even have to do that. You just decide on your own, right? And then while I have my little thing out here, I started, I started on this little English paper piecing project. Okay, little is not little. I decided I should make a tree skirt because clearly that's what I should do. Um, so I started with these little hexagons. This is the Rifle Paper Company's kind of Christmassy winter line. And so this is how much I've done so far, but I'm not in love. Uh, I do enjoy the process, but I'm not in love with how this looks. So I'm, I'm sitting on it to decide like, okay, do I do like, do you know how like there's the flower garden one or whatever, where you just do like the little hexagon grouping? Like, do I decide to do that as like one color? Like, you know, make them all this green or whatever. And then like just fit the units together. Or, you know, do I do something else? Because in my mind, I really loved the like patchwork feel of it. And that's really one of the reasons I chose this rifle um, is because it doesn't look super cohesive. Like a normal, like, you know, Moda charm pack or whatever. Um, so one of the reasons I chose it is because it didn't look quite that uniform. Um, so I don't know. I'm like, do I just keep going? And like, cause I think a lot of times with patchwork, you actually really do need to see it like from a distance. Um, and so in that's in my head of like, okay, should I just keep on keeping on? But then part of it is also just like, but if you keep on keeping on it, you don't like it. Mm. <laughs> like that is definitely, woo. Obviously, like my mother is a quilter. Um, and obviously there's a difference in like technical skill level, huge difference. But I think one of the biggest differences is that she can see what things will look like without having to do them. Like she can look at quilt, like she can look at colors and combinations and things and feel very confident. Like she has a very artistic eye anyway. Uh, but she can look at that and, and I think she could really extrapolate in her mind's eye what that finished piece is going to look like versus I am not there. Like, so not only am I technically not there, but I'm just like, and that might even just be something I can't do. Like that might be like a, a different gift that she has that I don't have. I don't know yet. Um, because I don't think I've been doing it long enough to develop that, even if I do have it in me. Um, but yeah, I definitely am lacking that like vision of what something will look like. Um, but I do also think that a lot of that does just come from dedication to a craft, like, you know, with knitting and stuff like that. Like I can see what something's going to look like almost always. And like, I can see how the things need to fit together and what, what fit problems are going to be and that kind of stuff. Like I can, I, do you hear me hesitating? Cause I feel like I'm tooting my own horn. Just let that go, dude. Let it go. <laughs> But you know what I mean? Like, I feel like, and that's just because like, I've done this for 20 some years now. Um, so yeah, but anyway, so it's very pleasant to do these little English paper piecing things. Hey, did you see Susan B. Anderson, B. Anderson's on Instagram? Oh my gosh, did you also see your little wonky stars quilt? That, that wonky stars quilt has given me a little bit of, I mean, I say envy. There needs to be a different, there probably is, do you know the word that I'm looking for? That means like envy, but in like a nice way, like not in an envy, like I'm going to take the thing, like I would not take her wonky stars quilt if I could and could get away with it and nobody would know. Like that's not, like to me, that's kind of like what I think about envy as, as like this kind of like greedy, like, bad ugh, miasma thing and that's really I, I need a word that means like the the like oh my gosh I love that so much I totally want to make it for myself or I want to do but does it have like I because I feel like sometimes when I say that I envy something it makes the person feel like 
I don't mean Susan in any, but you know what I mean? Like it might make somebody feel like I'm like coveting their thing. Like I want it. I want it. And I'm mad that you have it and I don't have it. Okay. That's what I'm going for. Like I am not, I'm so glad you have it. Like I am very happy you have it. When I say that I'm envious that you're going to Scotland, it is like, yay, you're going to Scotland. I would totally love to do that. But it's not like, oh, you're going to Scotland. I hope you stub your toe on all of the rocks because I really want to go there too. It's not like that. Is there a word for envy that doesn't mean that nasty stuff? Oh my gosh. I'm a hot mess, y'all. But anyway, so, but yes, her wonky star school is so cute. And also her... All of Susan's cool. Okay, Susan is cute. <laughs> like, her DNA is cute. Like, um, but those are very gorgeous and I love them. But anyway, so here's mine so far. We'll see how it goes. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Okay, then th speaking of people who just have an amazing aesthetic that I dig so much, um, Lore and I don't know if it's Lore or Lori or Lore, I apologize. But her the last name is Pemberton and she's an artist and I dig her work so much. And she, I have one of her prints on my wall framed, but I couldn't resist this one, I had to have it. And then look, she sent along this little freebie, which I love so much. <laughs> this is the perfect freebie for me. I. I'm dying. Wait, can you, is it focusing? What? What? I went to like tattoo it on my body. I just, what is in me? I just wanna press it into my skin and make it a part of me. But anyway. Somebody tattoo this one. I'm out of control. But look at this print I bought. Oh, can you see it? It's called the Glen. And like, could there be? Oh. So I love it ever so much. I also really like the way she draws people, but I, I have very little artwork with human beings in it. <laughs> Isn't that terrible? Also, I really want to see more fat people draw, and I would really love to see how she would draw fat people. She doesn't really draw fat people. That's a problem. Um, but anyway. Not a problem. It's a problem for me. It's not a problem for her. It's a problem for me. I would love to see how she would draw fat people. But anyway. But in general, like I just tend to not really like images of people so much in my house. I guess it's like Okay, this might be a not safe for work. So if the kids are around, just skip ahead a minute. I guess it's kind of like that like heterosexual male trope of enjoying the thought of no men in their, you know what I'm talking about. I'm afraid the kids haven't left yet. Maybe it's like that. Like, I don't want to see other people in here because they're not me. And so like, then we have to compete for who's living in this place. Is that what it is? Am I so small minded? Whatever. It's okay. <laughs> Cis hetero male thing. am I? But I mean, come on. And I think she does often, I think she does do like a seasonal sale in the, in the, for like holiday-ish things, but I can't remember. Oh, so enjoyable. What else? <laughs> okay, I'm gonna put shameless self-promotion in right here because it's on top of stuff, but it's really short. And again, I'll timestamp it so you can jump ahead. 
Okay, October 1st, I'm doing an up. Oh, I should have done that first. Oh, what's the countdown next? October 1st, I'm gonna do an update of my library bags. So if you've been with me for a while, you may remember these guys, right? So I'm gonna have them basically just in the two larger sizes. The, the smaller size is not moving a lot right now. So I just went ahead and went with the sweater size, which is great for like a five, I should just call it the Stephen West shawl bag. Um, no, it's great for like five-ish skeins. Um, so it's great for like a, like a lighter, like a fingering or a sport weight sweater, even for me, um, like an in-progress sweater or a, a giant shawl um, or a sweater that's heavier weight for a human who is slightly smaller than me. Um, and then I have my Aaron sweater, which is where, this is actually the bag I use the most because it's just like a good catch-all um, and it will fit a big sweater for even for a person like me. So, or like if you have a blanket project or something, or again, you just want to use it to kind of catch other things. So I'll have that update October 1st at 9 p.m. Um, at FatSquirrelFibers.com. If they sell, okay, I might also just list a pre-order just in case they sell out, just so you know that it's there. Because um, I hate the thought of it, like if it if it would happen to sell out and then you get discouraged and leave. So I'll just, I'll just put a pre-order just in case. Um, and it will be a true pre-order. It'll be like a four to six week one. Um, but yeah, so that's happening. And then the next update, update I'll have will be October 15th. And I won't show you everything we're doing for that update. Um, I do have samples shown, but that's quite a bit in the future. But I did want to show you one thing because uh, several folks have asked about my big fancy bags. I've kind of put them on hold because they I, I've been deciding like how my pricing structure should go on them and like if I really want to make them well, like there's lots of stuff that happens right um, for a newer bag that I roll out so um, I'm still kind of in that decision making process oh I forgot to do that one step on these uh, I'm still in that decision making progress process but um, I am going to release the is they don't have the handles on them yet, I'm sorry. But I think this one is going to have um, the gray, right? The gray leather. And it'll still have the rivets like the older ones did. Um, but yeah, so I have this great canvas that has got copper. Yeah, there it goes, it's metallic with the yarn balls. Oh, do you love it? So there'll be this lovely taupey gray. And then there will also be a black option. And the black option will have black leather handles. So yeah. So I did want to just show you those. So I've had several folks, and this also has the copper uh, metallic. So yeah. Right? So those are coming up. Okay, and then I'll show you. Oh, I should, this would have really worked well with the art, but whatever. God, it's like trap. Oh my gosh, Little Witch Hazel has come out. I did pre-order mine because I love Phoebe Wall's art style so much and it did not disappoint, did not disappoint. Um, I She's actually doing, oh, I don't know what that is. On Instagram Live, she's doing a read along and she is darling just as her human self as well. So I'm looking forward to that, but it might be this, it might be tonight. But check it to see if she might save it in her stories or something. But, I mean, I am just dying. Like, can we discuss that she's a midwife? Can we discuss that she is rocking some overalls? Like, I just... Can we discuss that her butt is, like, Melissa McCarthy cute? Passing out with how cute this all is. Do you see your sweater? I'm trying to get to the point where she, oh, here she is, right there. her gathering basket. I die. I die. <sighs> so, do I have children that I'm reading this book to? No. Um, but did I get this purely for myself? Of course I did. Oh my gosh, I totally forgot 
post to a little stitchery of her. Oh, so cute. And also, I love the... Okay, this is an actually like a fabulous representation of what she looks like as a human being. That's essentially exactly what she looks like. It's amazing. But like, look at the end papers. I love an end paper that's a map. I love it. So this is Mosswood Forest and the end papers. Mm -hmm. I'm dead. Dead of it. Just killed me. I'll see you in the afterlife. <sighs> Do you need another cup? I do too. It's crazy. Okay. So then, let's talk about sewing. Okay. So, I'm going to put in two back-to-back -back finished objects right here. No ease at all versus the negative ease you usually use for elastic, like for holding up your pants or what have you. Um, so it doesn't really look gathered so much as it just kind of looks like it's pulled in. And then they also have uh, a long sleeve gathered cuff option, which I definitely am going to try um, pretty soon for a fall sweater or fall shirt, especially with these like very lightweight wovens. I think it would be a very versatile option for me. Um, and so they have those, that pattern piece, like the sleeve, they have available on their blog as a free download. Then it has the directions and then you can either get the copy shop version of it or you can just cut and paste it, um, like the tiled version. So you can do either or. But yeah, I think, did I turn around on this? I don't even remember. I did The sleeve I did differently than was indicated because I had this kind of fun, um, bright, um, salvage <laughs> for the warp and weft that I wanted to kind of work in. So I did this even a little bit differently just to accommodate for that. But, but yeah, I think I'm pretty pleased with it. And it stays pretty nicely on my shoulders. It doesn't seem to want to ride up or back. Um, it definitely, if anything, rides up a little bit, which again is another reason to look at doing an FBA, um, just because it'll give it a little bit more room to kind of like hang, you know, to hang out where it should. Um, but the sleeve is not, or the neckline is not too open. I might bring it in just a teensy tiny bit just to, in case, I don't really like it when my bra straps peek out if I wear them. So yeah, but other than that, I'm pretty pleased with it. Okay, so this is my Ellsworth shirt, which is a pattern by Merchant and Mills. I purchased the um, PDF version. I don't think they have a print version in the extended sizes. I could be wrong about that, but I'm fairly confident they don't have that, or at least they don't have it yet. Um, I made the largest size, and I made it with a mid-weight linen. I think it's 5.3 ounces um, from linen-store.com. It's in like the $11 um, neighborhood and so my size required two and a half yards so it's about $25 um, and plus a small amount of interfacing which I used we'll talk you don't know what to type right now I used my interfacing was supposed to be like featherweight but or maybe it was just light I'm almost positive it said featherweight but it is a little stiff this has only been washed once since it's been interfaced, so maybe I'll give it another washing before I decide, like, if I should change interfacings. Um, and it might just be, again, because this fabric is a little heavier. Usually, heavier fabric, you want slightly heavier interfacing, but maybe it was just, like, too much with um, this fabric. But anyway, I would not normally go with tone on tone, but I'm not changing my pants just to show my shirt. So that would be kind of silly. So anyway, so this is the size that I should make. So this seems to kind of match up with, um, you know, fit models that I'm seeing, you know, things like that. It, my hem looks crooked, but I think it's just because I'm standing weird. Or no, okay, just because I had it up funny. Anyway, so this kind of looks similar to the fit I see on their models. But I am not quite used to this, like, very oversized garment. Um, I really love the look of them on folks. I just need to adjust my own you know, to decide if I really like it. Like right now, when I first put it on, I was like, I don't really care for this. 
like it felt it just didn't feel I didn't feel I didn't feel like I wanted it to feel it didn't feel like fun and interesting it kind of just felt a little bit frumpy for lack of a better word I'm trying to did you hear me decide if that's a charged word or not I don't think it is but anyway so I just kind of felt like you know and I don't know if that's because like in my head I'm still kind of equating oversized clothing to like my younger ideas of hiding my body or I don't know, I can't unpick what that feeling is about per se, or if it's just that I just don't particularly like the style. I don't know yet, but I'm sitting with it um, for, I'm going to sit with it. Obviously, this is a garment that I now have and will wear, but I'm sitting with it before I decide on if I want to use this pattern for other things. Um, but yeah, so here it is. I didn't make any adjustments. This is exactly as written, um, you know, minus my own errors. I made a weird error with the hems which I don't know what I did, but I mean, I don't know where I went wrong. How's that? <laughs> this is the first time I've ever done a placket that wasn't like a full, that's a lie. I don't even know that I've ever done a full placket, but definitely have never done this like kind of Henley style placket. And so I had a bit of a, it's a bit wonky. It's not bad. It's just a little bit wonky, but I do like how my little buttonholes turned out. And yeah, so overall, I mean, I'm pleased with how it turned out. I just haven't decided if I like the look of it. So I also probably should experiment with some different trousers and things like that to see how I feel about it. And then I'll make a decision ultimately. But I mean, it's got a high-low hem, so the back hem is lower than the front hem. It's split. Um, oh, I should give you my reference part. So this is my bending waist. So this is my natural waist. This is the top of my ultra-high-waisted Glebe pants, which I love, moon and broad. Um, so yeah, plenty of room, plenty of room in the arms and all of that good stuff. Yeah, so there it is. Bazam. Okay, so yeah. Um, so those are my finished objects of sewing so far. I have another one, but it was a test sew, so I can't show you yet. But let me just discuss. It involves a quilt block. I think you're gonna dig it. Can we just discuss that I have like totally moved to only wear my bifocals now? I don't, I've not changed my glasses in forever, which is very strange. <gasps> oh my gosh, I wish you could see Gus right now. <sighs> He's the worst dog ever. He actually, I'm actually, I'm welling up. Um, He's such a bad dog. The other day, it was like a week ago now, he's been obsessed with this groundhog that's in the in the backyard. He um, was out and Annie was out. Well, I was doing other stuff and got distracted. And so Annie will always tell me she wants to be let in. So I went to let her in and I was like, I had forgotten that Gus went out too. And I thought, oh, he's upstairs with the teen, like, cause sometimes it happens but he had escaped. He had like dug under our fence and he rolled in something. I didn't even know for like maybe 40 minutes. I don't even, maybe three years. I'm not sure. I didn't even realize he wasn't home until Annie started barking cause he had come and he was out on the front porch. So like, I'm so thankful that he was okay. But after I was thankful that he was okay, I picked him up and he had rolled in something so foul. <laughs> so gross. So we had to like reinforce the gate so he couldn't get out. But now he's laying like on his little beanbag pillow and he's got both of his feet, like both his front paws and his back paws, like crossed over in front of him. And he's like just laying on his, like he's kind of like at an angle. I don't know what about it is so cute, but it, I am dying. Ah, <sighs> stupid dog. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's always made me well. I'm totally not menstruating. I don't even have a uterus anymore. Oh, so cute. Okay, but so like the reason I sewed 
the Ellsworth, oh, that's the green one that I showed you, um, from Merchant and Mills, is because I bought, okay, Merchant and Mills fabric is so gorgeous when I see it in pictures. Okay, I've not actually had, okay, until this recently, I've only had like one piece of it in my hands and it was like, it was nice, but it was like a, it was like that jacquard, like the, the quilted kind of thing. So it was a little bit different. Um, oh, that's not true. I also bought like a seersucker ones. I don't think their fabric bases are anything necessarily more amazing than anybody else's good quality fabric, but they know how to sell me some stuff. Like they know, they know how to do it. Um, so, but it is definitely spindier than I usually get. But like I had to have this. I think you agree. This is a linen and it is like a five ounce. So it's like a mid-weight linen and like they know how to make a color that I need to have. Um, this is actually like available in several different colorways and they're all gorgeous. Like they're all just gorgeous. And I don't even want to think about the fact that like I um, am attributing to like this cloth being manufactured, sent to England and then sent to me. But I did that. Oh, carbon footprint is really growing. Um, but, uh, uh. <laughs> less so than if it was ready to wear, right? Cause then it would have had to like get the cloth would have been manufactured. Then it would have been sent to the place they were making the clothes. And then it would have been sent to the place where they were selling the clothes. And then it would have been sent to me. So, I mean, it's totally fine, right? Oh my gosh. Like, don't even get me started. <laughs> Oh, we're overreaching. We're overreaching. That's okay. Okay. Stop it. Stop it. This is not a podcast about our overuse of our resources. But if you're interested in a podcast about our overuse. <laughs> okay, I was just listening. Okay, my friend Joanna, who is Knit Spin Farm, who is amazing, um, just recommended this YouTube series to me. And I've only... I just finished watching the first one and oh, fiddle faddle. That's right. I said it. Um, this is the Can Canadian Association. Barbadar. Oh, come on. I can't read it all. The Canadian Association for something. For the Club of Rome. See, I don't even know what that is. I'm not that fancy. But she recommends specifically this video that has um, Mr. Bill Reese in it, who in his video is called Too Clever by Half, but Not Nearly Smart Enough. Um, he's kind of the dude who originated with his graduate students the concept of the carbon footprint. And so his jam is that um, climate change is just a small part, part of a larger problem, which is which includes things like the acidification of the oceans. It includes things like um, income discrepancies between the rich and the poor. And it is all related to our overconsumption of the resources that we have. So, you know, that we're using something like twice as many resources as the planet actually has for us. So we're basically reaching into the resources of the future and consuming those. And Boy, that video. Okay, let me just tell you this one thing. It's like an hour and 40 minutes long, but don't be, I was really depressed when I started. I mean, it's very depressing, but I was like almost crushed to the point of not continuing on because it is so, it's bleak. Um, but the, but the talk is not that full hour and 41 minutes. The talk is only like 40 minutes. So it's very good and it's super dense. It is a very dense talk and there are a million talking points. It's really amazing. But I do want to just warn you if there's something you're interested in, like, or not warn you, but just like let you know, like, hey, you just got to buckle in for like, and you don't have to do it all at once, obviously. Take it like medicine. Do it like for five minutes at a time. But like, 
I was really like, I can't, I don't know if I can do an hour and 40 minutes of this because it might just like crush me into like a quantum singularity size thing. And then like, I would also then suck the entire universe into me and then it was like be bad for everything. But it's not the full hour and 40 minutes. It's just about 40 minutes. And it's really excellent. It's very concise. It is um, filled with lots of talking points that you can use in terms of like, just like quick little factoids or like examples. Um, well, that's not, maybe not completely true. But it's filled with so many like kind of facts that you could definitely hold on to. And then, you know, I think I'm going to watch it um, like four or five more times um, just to try to get a hold on all of it. Because again, it was so dense, but it's pretty amazing. But this is not a podcast about climate uh, or about resource overreach back to this podcast about whatever it is about um, but anyway so I had to buy this <laughs> and so then I really str I really thought that um, I have two and a half yards so and it is like a 56 inch wide I think um, so I really thought I was really committed to making this Ellsworth top with it because I was like in my brain like that was really like gonna hit it all I didn't necessarily want to do a full like a regular button up because I'll be honest with you I've never done like trying to match plaids and I just wasn't sure if I was ready for that especially I was not ready to spend the extra I have two and a half meters it was like 2.7 yards or something um I knew that I was also not ready to spend that extra half meters worth of fat cost <laughs> so silly but whatever it is what it is it's spendy yo um so I was like, I don't know if I want to spend that extra to get like my fat, my plaids to match up. And again, I've never done that before and I don't want to do it on like a very precious piece of fabric. Excuse me, I gulped my tea too fast. So I thought that Ellsworth would be perfect because it has kind of like that feel of a button up because it's got a collar, but it just has that Henley and it's not, doesn't have a seam down the front. Um, so I don't have to worry about the plaids. It'll just be one piece. Um, so I think I might, still go with that pattern. I have not completely decided because again, I'm still trying to get used to that look on myself, but maybe if I pair it with like a pair of, you ready? Maybe if I pair it with like a pair of Arthur pants, which are by So Liberated, which are like those really like balloony pants, which I'm not gonna lie, I love. I love to wear them. I'm gonna make more. I have a pair of flannel ones that I made like as my toile for like pajama pants and I love them. They're like a kind of pants that make you dance inside them because you have like lots of fabric around you and so you just feel like you're like, secret dancing on the inside. I love them. But, so I haven't completely decided, but maybe like the feeling of like slightly frumpiness or dowdiness would be helped by very fun pants that are sort of modern-ish and like what if I made them out of this pinwheel corduroy what if I did that what what if I did that would that be amazing I don't know I can't tell but if I was like mm, maybe I just want to make uh, but maybe I could also just make some pants out of this this pinwheel quarter is totally from Joanne's, yo. Was like, does it have stretch? I want to think, I want to, yes. It actually has stretch, right? I've never, never just sewn with the stretch woven yet. But it does have stretch. Not that you would need them for those um, Arthur pants. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> That's not silly. But it'd be great if you were making it like a pinwheel, like a dress or something. Okay, I'm not gonna lie. My mom had from Lane Bryant had this like chocolate brown pinwheel, like empire waisted button up the front dress that I totally stole from her in like high school, I think, or college. I don't remember. Um, and I could really imagine like doing that again. <gasps> oh no, now I'm like, maybe I should do that, but then I could just wear my little shirt over it. Oh. Now I'm really, oh, 
<laughs> now I can't decide. But with, that would be pretty cute. And I have like some gray wool footless tights from Snag Tights because they make tights for super fat people. That would be really cute. Okay, anyway, I'm not sure what it's gonna be yet. I might be limited by yardage on that one. But that would be very cute. And I could make it short sleeved, so that would help with yardage. Oh, no, I'm thinking about that. It's so cute. Okay, stop it. But then I also bought this fabric from U Fibers to make some corduroy trousers with. It's what? It's obviously, is it 14? I think it's 14. Yeah, I think. No, maybe it's like 7 male. Whatever, it's wide whale. Um, so yeah. So. Okay, this is the exciting thing about U Fibers that I didn't know. A, they sell both fiber yarn and fabric very exciting but also if you have a pattern like a pdf pattern that you want printed you can totally order it through them so like if you're ordering fabric for a project and you need to have a pattern printed they'll do it you can save on shipping that way so you don't have shipping from two different places it's very it's very um competitive pricing with something like pdf plotting or something like that so it is on slightly different paper than PDF plotting. It's less like an actual bond that you would have for like office paper. It's slightly, um, it's slightly more, wait, now that I say that, I'm not entirely sure. Cause I think I got this else. Okay. Whatever. I don't know what I'm talking about. It's, it's lovely to use. I'm sure. <laughs> and I don't know where it is. It's over there. Anyway. Um, but so that's a, that's an option. You can like get your pattern printed if you're getting fabric. And so you can just get it all one stop. Isn't that nice? But um, yeah, so also I need some corduroy trousers. So I'm trying to decide if I should do something like, um, I've decided, I've, for, for a minute I really thought I was going to do a pair of moist jeans for Muna and Broad. But I really do really love having elastic in my waist. I'm just, I'm just who I am y'all. And comfort is the king. And so even though it, the thing I'm concerned about, of course, is it's a heavier fabric. So will it gather, you know, for an elasticated waist? So what I might, what I'll probably do is do something like a glebe pant, but just kind of narrow the leg a little bit, make it more like the wide leg profile of the noise jean. Um, cause the glebe pant is a very wide leg. Um, so I might narrow it a bit and then make like the flat, the flat front. They have some pleats in the front with a flat waistband and then just do the elastic in the back. Business in the front, party in the back. So that's what I'm thinking maybe I'll do. But like, right. <laughs> I mean, come on. That's fun, right? That's fun. So yeah, now that we've discussed this dress thing, I'm really torn. Okay, you don't need to hear any more about it. <laughs> You're like, we got it, we're good. Oh, so the other thing I wanted to mention though about the Ellsworth is, I can't remember if I said it in the, I think I did, in the video is that I was a little bit concerned that maybe I used the, um, the interfacing I used was a little bit too stiff. So this is the interfacing I used, which is, um, Featherweight fusible, so I'm not making that up. It's 911FW. And it's, oh, it doesn't tell you for what weights. But yeah, but it doesn't feel feathery. <laughs> it feels pretty substantial. So I may have to go and look for something lighter weight in the future. Or again, I'll just see how that washes up after a couple of different washes. Okay, I'm also going to show you. <laughs> I did get from Joanne's also. What? I also got this panel, this corduroy. So now, are these pants or are these overalls? I don't know. Like I could have pink corduroy overalls. I could be my best toddler self. But trousers would also be amazing. 
I can't decide. I had a very dreadful thought, which I bit back immediately, but I had a thought of like, I need to get a job in the real world so I can wear all these cute clothes all the time. And then I took it back immediately. <laughs> I'll just have a great ensemble out, uh, wardrobe for when we go on our apple picking um, psilocybin retreat across the country thing. It'll be great. Okay, let's have my knitting. So yeah, I've, I'll, I'll put it in here. I finished my sweater. So here is my finished Azor sweater. Right? Ah, so cute. I definitely made modifications. I couldn't tell you what they are, but I always have deep increased the bust more than the pattern indicates. I usually start with a smaller size, um, so I usually go by my upper bust size and then increase um, wrap more rapidly in the front um, to accommodate my bust. But here's lengthwise. This is my natural waist and the bending waist. Like, I don't know. What I, I'm saying that word, and now I don't think that's correct, because when I look at myself bend, whatever. Here's where my bee belly meets. <laughs> this is where my belly button line is. That's what we say. This is my belly button line. <laughs> and then here is the top of my ultra high-waisted pants. So just to kind of give you an idea of where things are falling and whatnots. Okay? Okay. So that is my sweater, the Azor sweater by Orlan Suchet. Such. Um, yeah, Barrett Wool's Fingering Weight Wisconsin Woolen. Love it. So excited to wear it. I do have two skeins left over, so. Oh, I mentioned last time that I might do a fing. Oh gosh, you're itching. He's having. Um, I mentioned last time that I might do um, a slight sock yarn, like a superwash merino striping sock yarn um, de-stash October 1st. I don't think I'm going to do that anymore. I realized that I could just have those yarns cranked um, into sock tubes. I think that's what I'll do instead. So um, Bill and Joanna of Knit Spring Farm do, well, Mr. Bill does the, the tubey sock cranking um, and they've started that back up against the fall. So I think I'm going to send some socks to them. Well, I'm going to send some yarn to them to come back as tubes. I think that's what I'm going to do. Uh, but yeah, so I'm very pleased with my sweater. I'm sniffing it. Like it's tufted woolens. Ah, so good. But yeah, I'm very pleased with it. Um, I think it looks super cute with my little gray trousers that are high-waisted. Um, I'm really digging it. It would be super cute with my potentially pink trousers or dress. Who knows what it will be. Won't that be darling? So cute. So yeah, I'm very pleased with it. Um, I'm, I'm a very terrible um, role model. That's not the right word. Example? Whatever. Because um, I never can do a pattern the way it's written. <laughs> That's not terrible, but I mean, it's, it's, it might make it hard for somebody who's watching the podcast to be like, that's, I knit that too. And that's not exactly how it worked for me. Um, but I did knit the yoke pretty much the yoke as written. I believe it was just in the yoke ends before the, um, armpit, which is a fact as, which I really like, um, because there's multiple reasons. It gives you some room to get in some extra increases if you need them for your bust or for whatever reason. Um, it gives you some room to do that. So you can either do them, this pattern is written with some raglan increases here, but you could also just pepper them through. You could decrease, you know, continue the yoke increases as written. You could actually add in more increases because you have more room to do it in the yoke. You could put them actually in the front, um, which is what I did as well. Um, where you're, if you're, if you do have boob flesh that you're trying to cover, um, 
you can put them in the front where you're actually going to have that. And it's very, very easy to add them in where you need them and then take them out. Um, what else? Oh, but I also like it just for ease in terms of like, um, and that's not, I don't mean ease like positive or negative ease, but just like the comfort of moving your arms uh, because stranded has less stretch to it. Um, so it's nice if the, if the stranded color work ends a little bit above the um, arm side because it just, it, get, it just makes you feel less restricted in your movement is what I'm trying to say, I think. And boy, is it nice to do just a two color color work scheme because then you don't have to think about it. Yay! <laughs> Speaking of doing a two color color work theme, that's not what I'm doing in this sweater. <laughs> oh, I left my pattern over there, so I can't. Oh, this dog is so distracting. Annie is here. She's under her chair, so I can't see how cute she is. Oh, but she's very cute. Gus is just like right in the middle of the floor because he's he's that dude. Um, but I am making Hillary Fluff and the Magic Fun Fungi pattern, and that is by. Bunny Muff. I'm trying to find her human name. She's cute as a button. This is a Bunny Muff knit pattern. Mona Zilla. Z I L L A H. So this is what the pattern looks like. It is a top down stranded color work cardigan knit with a steak. The sleeves are yokes. The sleeves are not steaked, but the front of the cardigan is. And it has this, the color work is very easy. It's actually the same two motifs through the entire sweater, except at the bottom where you have this. Hi. Hi. And I actually bought this yarn and this pattern probably last spring and it's just been hanging out because um, one of the rough things about being a person who likes the yarn I do, I like woolen spun yarns. Um, and by the way, her color choice is amazing, but it was, it's with a, a yarn that is not easily accessible by me. And I'm not even sure if it's actually still going. Uh, it's by gathered sheep yarns. Um, which I mean, but I decided to do mine in Rauma fingering weight, the finure. Um, and I decided that I was going to do it in purples and greens. And this was like last spring. So it was way before I bought the yarn to make. Well, maybe not way before. I don't know when I bought this yarn. It was before I bought the yarn to do my crocheted cardigan, which is also purples and greens. So I kind of like, I'm like, oh, I kind of like just went a little really hard in on that colorway, but color scheme, but whatever, it is what it is. But one of the problems about buying yarn online, of course, is that it's really hard to like see, especially for a color work sweater that has, what does this have? Nine, it has a main color and I think like nine contrasting colors. Now you could totally do it with, with fewer. You could make all these, you know, whatever. If you buy the pattern, you can see where you could just make all of the, there's a repeated pattern. And there's basically three colorways of the same pattern repeat. So you could just use one colorway, which would eliminate an additional like four yarns or something. Um, there's seven. No, there's nine. There's nine contrast colors and a main color. So there's 10 colors. So that's a really hard to buy for when you can't actually hold the things in your hands and look at them. Um, but I went for it anyway, and I mostly worked out. Um, so I've got the finur, the Rama finur, and then, so I have all these colors. Oh my gosh, so exciting. But the color I got for like the button bands, okay, the color I got I got a color that was lighter than this original. It was actually a, it was actually way lighter than I realized, and it was a pink. And so it just looked too pink for me. Like it looked too baby pink for me. 
Um, so I decided what I would do is over dye it. So I used some Cushing's, um, it's actually the bright purple, but it, it turned out this like really great eggplanty. It's slightly bluer than an eggplant, but not too blue like a royal blue. Um, you're like, whatever, we don't care to show us. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Um, but here it is so far. <laughs> I'm very pleased. So instead of using that pink here, I used this, which is Briggs and Little Heritage. No, Heritage is actually one of their weights. It's Briggs and Little, their sport weight, which is a single ply. Um, and it is rustic, but boy, is it cheap. It's really affordable. Um, it's a great yarn um, to have as, again, as an alternative, um, because I think it's like $7 a skein in the U.S., or maybe it's $8 a skein. You get it from Maritime Family Farm, Maritime Family Fibers, and they have several, like, quite a good color selection, but of course you can also over dye it as well. Um, and that's one of the other colors that I didn't kind of have is I needed like a good, like olivey, scrummy, dark olivey color. And so I had a skein of, um, Bartlett yarns, their sport weight yarn, um, which I over dyed with Cushing's bronze green. And I really like how that turned out. So yeah, I'm pretty excited at this point. <laughs> so the pattern is written for fingering weight, but I'm doing sport weight. Um, I actually, my tension is not terribly different. I think the pattern is 26 to four inches and I'm at like 24 to four inches. Um, so I'm making a slightly smaller size than I normally would. And um, this is a great, another great pattern if you're doing color work, um, if you're doing stranded sweater, but you're needing to work in extra increases. Like if you have a bigger difference between your upper bust and your full bust size, um, because you have these solid bands which are placed very regularly, so it's very easy to add some extra increases in there if you need them. Um, so yeah. Okay. Okay. So this will definitely be my first. I said definitely, and then was like not so sure. I believe this is my first fully stranded sweater for myself. I may actually fully stranded sweater period. Um, my like first knitting project, second knitting project was a stranded color work vest for my grandfather. Um, when I was in college and I had like 15 different colors or something ridiculous in it. I <laughs> just didn't know. I didn't even know how to pearl. <laughs> I'm not sure I can't remember if I did that I must have done that green sweater for myself first when I started that sweater I did not know how to pearl that must be what I did I must have done that green sweater for myself first and then did the stranded vest for my grandfather yes because I believe yes because I'm almost positive that I bought the yarn Okay, that's what I did. I'm almost positive that I bought the yarn for that sweater vest for my grandfather on like winter, on um, Thanksgiving break. Maybe I put on, uh, whatever. I was ridiculous. Basically what we're saying is I was ridiculous and continue to be ridiculous forever. Okay? Okay. Um, but yeah, very exciting, but I've never done one for myself. But especially when I was knitting that Azor sweater, I was like, you know what? I really enjoy the color work part of this so much. It's very potato chippy for me. And like, why don't I just do it for the whole sweater? Cause then, cause then I won't be like, oh, I got all this plain body to knit. So we'll see how it goes. And then the last thing I have to show you is also a new project. Um, I have this swatch, which I am in love with. This is Beaver Slide Dry Goods. This is their worsted weight. It's two ply, right? Yeah, two ply worsted weight. But their yarns are 
different within the worsted weight range. Like they have a different mohair content. So some of them I think have up to 30% seems like that's more than what it is. Whatever. They have a varying mohair content and then the wool con the wool content is is merino. Is their merino. Um, and this one happens to be 100% merino. And it is very soft. This is the snowberry colorway. And I just fell in love. Where am I with all this pink? Who am I? I'm telling you, when they take out your ovaries, something weird happens. Um, so this pink, I just, this is brioche. I just did this little sample and I just love it. I, I'm fully committed to this sample <laughs> and I needed a sweater to, to make the, this into a sweater. But I had the darndest trouble finding a pattern. Um, Petite Knit has several patterns that looked cute, but they were not available in anywhere near my size. Um, there were a couple patterns I thought were cute, but I did not like um, the finished objects that I looked at for people. Like it seemed like there was either something going on with the pattern or something going on with the, the stitch. Like I've never made a brioche stitch into a sleeve. I don't know why it would be a problem, but it seemed like a lot of this, and it may have just been a stylistic choice by the designer, you know, to give it like a very like full gathered look, but a lot of them looked like they had way, like more volume at the bottom than I would want. So not just like fullness then decreasing to cuff, but like fullness and then like folded under decreasing to a cuff, which is way more volume than I want. And so again, I'm not sure if that's like a function of, you know, yarn choice, if that was a function of gauge, because a lot of the modern sweaters are knit at a much looser gauge than I personally like. Um, and especially knitting at a very loose gauge uh, with like a superwash yarn, I feel like can create a fabric flow or drape that I don't want it for this project. Um, so yeah, I'm not sure. Anyway, so I just didn't find anything that really like hit it for me. Um, and so certainly I could make my own pattern, but I got kind of nervous when I saw those brioche sleeves looking really like not what I wanted. You know what I mean? And there certainly were other ones that did. They did have a look. There were several patterns in this category that I really liked that were not size inclusive. Um, which is kind of wild. Most of the times I can, do, I, I find stuff without too much problem, but specifically, I guess, again, this is just a way smaller subset. Um, there was definitely fewer options. And then that's also coupled with the fact that I was really kind of hesitant. Do I really want to make myself a worsted weight sweater because I run really warm? Surprise. And so it's not often that I would need a worsted weight sweater. So part of me was like, well, you should just make it as, as this and you can use it almost just like as your coat. But anyway, so I, and then I was like, I don't know if I want that to be. I've gone back and forth quite a bit. And I'm still kind of undecided. But at the moment, I did cast on. And I cast on this pattern which is not a cardigan. It is in fact a sleeveless jumper, sleeveless sweater, a vest, whatever you'd like to call it, depending on your region. And it's definitely in here. Why am I having so much difficulty finding the stinking thing? Here it is. It's called Daniela. And it's by Lucia Ruiz de Aguirre, Aguirre, Aguirre. And so it looks like this. Boop. Boop. <laughs> so I thought this might be slightly more versatile for myself 
because again, it does make a huge difference in your temperature range if you don't have sleeves going on. I liked the shaping, how it looked. I liked the I liked the overall look of it in general. It was a good gauge for what I was making. So I did cast on and I, I've got, it's kind of an interesting construction. Um, so I'm just kind of rolling with it at this point. You kind of cast on for the back and then you pick up for the straps. Um, but yeah, so here so far, that's just all I have because I'm, I kind of paused because I was like, but should I just go ahead and make my own sweater pattern? I don't know. But anyway, so this is where I'm at right now. So much indecision in my fall choices. So many options. Because if I make my own pattern, like, it's like the question of, like, functionality. Like, because if I'm going to think of it more as, like, a coat-ish kind of sweater, then cropped is probably not. Although that's true. Cropped would work because then I'm not sitting on it in the car and things like that. So that's a good point. And then I could still wear it with things that are longer than the sweater. Mm. So I'm really having trouble. I'm having so much trouble deciding. We'll just have to see what happens. Maybe it needs to pause for just a few more minutes while I wallow in my indecision some more. And then also I finished a bit more on my, um, woo, oh man, it almost came off the nails. On my Stay Soft, Stay Soft Shawl by Melanie Berg. And I totally had a funny thing that happened. So the way you knit this shawl is you knit it point, you cast on here. And then the green in this case is picked up or you're applying it. It's an applied side. Um, it, but it wasn't until I started knitting it that I realized I had knit it backwards. Backwards is maybe not the right word, but I mirrored it when I knit mine. So the way it's knit in the pattern is that this green point should actually, or this purple point should actually be over here. And so when I went to apply the edging, I was like, I didn't realize it for a while that I had like somehow, basically what I did is I just flip flop my right and wrong side at some point very early on or something. I don't know what I did. Or maybe when I started to add the stripe, I just wasn't paying attention. That's probably what it was. Um, it was just on autopilot. And so, but I was like starting to apply the edging and I was like, this does not make sense. And I was like, I know this shawl has been around for a long time. And even some people in the comments have said they've knit several of them. And I was like, so I know it's not the pattern. And I'm just like, but I do not get what's happening. And then I realized that I have totally flip-flopped the shawl, which is a new one. I've never done that before. But it took quite a bit of brain space for me to figure out how to flip-flop the applied edging for some reason. I was really like, ah, it was like a math problem that was beyond my scope of ability at the time. And I was just like, I don't, I, oh, <laughs> but I finally figured it out and now I'm on my way. <laughs> but that's a new problem for me. What the heck? And of course this is, um, oh my gosh, it's Bastrico. They've moved on. They sold their business. I'm so excited for them and what they will be doing in their new ventures. And then also so excited for the new proprietors of Espatrico. Um, but this is their Sunday morning yarn and this is the fingering weight. They also available. It's also available in a DK. And I'm enjoying it quite a lot. <laughs> like, I'm so ridiculous. Oh, Gus is laying on my corduroy. I don't blame you, Gus. Like, I totally have a thing going on here. Oh, you're laying on the Merchant and Mills, too, aren't you? Oh. Okay, I won't even show you everything, but come on. It's so fun to sew. You get to, like... You get to make your own clothes. <laughs> so I know that's really silly, but, like, <laughs> obviously. 
But like, again, as a, as a person who has limited ability to purchase things, um, in terms of like, there just aren't as many options for my body. Um, like it is, so, I'm like, oh, I can like make a thing that's like what I want. What? Sewing is really cool. It's very cool. Some maybe it needs to be my new mission to make sewing for everybody. Oh. Anyway. So I think that's all. I think that's all. Oh my gosh. There's still tea in the teapot though. So we can still continue to chat. You and I. Um, so yeah, that's all. Um, what else is going on? Knit nights have gone well, so I think we'll continue to do those for Patreons of the podcast. Patreons of the podcast. Patrons of the podcast. Um, so I think we'll continue to do those. Um, I'll try to plan either one or two a month. Um, and I hope that those times have worked. Again, we're doing like a Sunday um, early afternoon Eastern time or a Saturday evening. So, yeah, I think that's all until next time. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for coming over to visit, and um, I'll talk to you next time. Bye.